Willem Bowder is now a professor at the London School of Economics, and he is our live guest right now. Uh, good morning to you, Professor. Why don't you think that Dubai World should be bailed out? Well, uh, Dubai World is a private company. It happens to have a single shareholder, that is the government of Dubai, but its debt never was sovereign debt or sovereign guaranteed debt. It's a business venture that um, you know, lives or dies with the success of its ventures. And its main lines of business are either in terrible shape, as in the case of Nakheel, its construction subsidiary, or in wobbly shape, uh, no, it's in the case of its shipping interest and other interests outside Dubai. So this is a business that's fallen on hard times, and its creditors and bondholders simply have to take their lumps and not expect a sovereign bailout for an institution that is clearly not systemically significant. Well, it does seem today, at least, that the credit markets are perhaps signaling that they do believe that Abu Dhabi will, along with many other governments in the world, go ahead and bail out some of the troubled institutions within the borders. But it raises the question of whether the sovereign halo effect that had helped support uh, the ability to borrow in the region is now gone. I mean, does it not worry you that the ability to borrow will be inhibited? No, not at all, because the ability to borrow was greatly excessive during the boom years for uh, Dubai and other uh, countries in the region. There was a wild lending boom, which has now uh, come to grief. And uh, if we don't repeat that, because credit in the future will be more appropriately priced to reflect the fact that sovereigns won't stand ready, willing or able, to uh, uh, you know, assume the debt if the companies that make the bad investment go belly up, that would be a welcome development because it would likely prevent or at least mitigate uh, future booms and busts. In your FT column, Professor, you point out uh, that property developers, in your view, are not systemically important. However, we've seen elsewhere in the world that the spillover effect from those property busts can cause systemic risk to some sort when it comes to exposure. Um, is there something specific to this situation in the UAE that makes you less worried? In other words, are the debt instrument, instruments structured in a different way when it comes to mortgages? when it comes to uh, Sharia law that makes you less worried? No, not really. Uh, no, notionally, um, uh, sukuk, which is Islamic bonds, Islamic debt, is sort of asset-backed. But the assets that back this, uh, the, for instance, the, uh, the bonds of, uh, uh, of the uh, property development companies are two pieces of land about to be developed in the process of being developed for, uh, um, for construction in Dubai itself. And they're probably worth you know, less than 50% of what they were valued at, at their peak. Mm -hmm. so, um, but even so, the companies themselves do have real assets on their books, not Nakheel, which probably is mainly sand and rock. Right. But certainly uh, Dubai World has a lot of very good assets abroad. And so the right. total exposure, maximum exposure of $60 billion is um, compensated for the, the, even the question if the worst be, who is the buyer? Thank happens. you so much, Professor, for joining us.